Hi, this is Venetia, and welcome to back to Skipping with Jesus. Today, we're going to do a little, something a little different. Um, today is September the 5th of 2022, and this would have been my daughter, Celeste Thompson's, her, her 43rd birthday today. So, you hear me speak of, um, you know, the gifts that I get every year, um, around this time, um, usually in the month of August and September, um, the Holy Spirit is very close to me, always very close to me, but it's like he gives me these treasures. Um, and then around um, the time of her death, which would be October the 20th of um, 2006. So, um, I wanted to just show you um, the Bible that I first um, was my first gift. At the first um, year, she was killed in October, and so um, this was like the weekend of September the 5th, and um, there was a gentleman from Lee University that was going to be coming down and um, presenting um, a token of appreciation to my husband and I. Um, he had set up a, a um, educational scholarship at Lee University, and they were um, in her memory. And so they were bring. He was going to come down on Friday night and bring a um, token of appreciation. He'd already he had the airline ticket. He was going to see somebody in Tampa, so he came down and. Um, and so on Wednesday night, um, before he came, um, before he left on Friday night, he had gone um, into a storage room to get some things. He, tr he taught his son's class, and so he went in to get some supplies for that class. And as he was leaving, as he was leaving, he um, turned, and there was like a stack of like, 200 Bibles where people had left over the years, of, you know, just randomly. And he said that he looked and out of the corner of his eye, he saw her name, Celeste Thompson. Well, so um, you can't make this up. He already had the ticket to come see us. I had no Bibles. I had none of her journals. Her dad had all that, uh, all her stuff still, and I didn't have any uh, anything. Um, so um, when he came down that Friday night, he um, gave me her Bible. This was the first gift of the her first birthday that I received, and um, I looked through this Bible because I knew she used to write in her Bibles and, and you know, just um, she spent time with the Lord. And so I knew she, um, there was, had to be something in there that would just um, comfort me during this time. So I mean, I look page by page by page by page. And the only thing I could find in this whole Bible was in um, John 16, and she underlines, she underlines it right here. And over here she has written remain, and this is, I think that's the Hebrew word remain or abide, or the Greek word, I'm sorry. So, and so this is what she underlines, she underlined. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that the child is born into the world. No one will take away your joy. And then down here she underlines, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And at this point in time, I was, it wasn't even a year, so it was very, very tough time for me, very tough time. And 
I just took this like, oh, she's talking about this joy that she talked to me about at the swing set because that encounter happened in January um, and then this was the, um, the first weekend in September. So anyway, um, that's what I was thinking that this word, she was speaking of uh, my grief, you know. I didn't realize until years later that this was Jesus speaking of him having to go away. And, and um, I was so, the word didn't come alive for me. Uh, I was still in that religious spirit. I had no relationship with Jesus. So therefore, how could him speaking something in his word um, be relevant for me. I was taking it in the natural. But literally, I had looked through this Bible uh, for whatever I could find. And so, like I said, um, in um, December of um, 2022, this is the same year that I, I received all, all the I should have gotten that Bible, but I received all um, 12 different times um, Isaiah 61. I've got to be careful because it will fall apart. <laughs> Isaiah 61, and believe me, I had looked through this Bible. There was nothing. The Holy Spirit drew me to this Bible, um, and um, on I, it was a day right before Christmas or something, and as I opened it up, this whole, the whole chapter of, of 61 is highlighted. It's highlighted, okay? And those four verses that I read as um, are the tribe's mission statement at, in the other video that I show um, of, um, I have appointed you um, to the tribe of Ishakar. Um, she has underlined. She has underlined it. She dated it October 2001. Actually, this is October 7th, 2001. This would have been almost like five years before um, that um, she got killed. But also speaking of five years, it had to be approximately three to five years prior to um, the gentleman that brought this Bible to me um, it had to be three to five years prior to that when she attended the church in Cleveland, Tennessee, because she graduated and she was she was down here working. So she had left this Bible some three to five years prior, and I believe it was my Lord that had her forget this Bible so that it would be given to me on God's right, just his divine timing. And then as I um, read in that previous um, word regarding, um, I have appointed you to the Issachar tribe, um, I flip over when I just picked this up, okay? <laughs> because what he is talking to us about in our tribes is uprooting and tear down um, and rebuilding, right? So she has, <laughs> she has um, up here at the top, she says, unity and community. Number two, God, God loves for, I don't, I don't know what her abbreviation, but number three is God is sovereign. God is sovereign, she puts. And she says down here, repairing the city. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what the Lord's called me to do, is to repair the cities. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and they and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairers of the broken walls and restorer of streets and dwellings. She underlined that. Can you see? She underlined that. <laughs> that this is some of the, I just want to share some of these things with you 
that when I say that I get these little special, um, special, special gifts, that um, Isaiah 61 was in 2022. I firmly believe that the Holy Spirit um, blinded me to anything that was um, that she had marked up other than John 16, 21 there. So, um, and so that's one thing. Okay. So before she was killed, um, her and I did not have, um, a really good relationship, um, a mom daughter relationship. There was, um, because of, um, my trauma, um, because of who I was as a sinner, um, and um, we we didn't get along very well. Okay, so as I am writing my book, and um, the Holy Spirit is just going one room in my heart after another. At, and I, I told her the story of uh, Bethel, how I had a vision that uh, um, when I first started writing my book where I laid, uh, Abba laid me down at Bethel on that rock and these angels I could see going up and down this ladder. And at night, um, while I was writing my book, um, it, I would get downloads, complete downloads of, of like movies playing in my mind of a memory or of, of, uh, 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 um, of a healing process, literally. It was, it was a quite an amazing process. When I say it was a live healing event, it was a live healing event. Well, when the Lord, um, when the Holy Spirit was ready for to um ready to work on forgiveness which we all um have to learn how to forgive because um, if not then we are going to be held um, by strong holds i want you to know i'm going to read this ch chapter on forgiveness but I had gone to a box that I had kept all these kinds of little keepsakes and everything. And on the, and the top of this box was this card. This card um, was from Celeste and it was dated, um, it was dated 2000. Um, and so, um, and she talks to, she talks to me about forgiving me. Well, this was the chapter I titled it. She forgives me. I don't make this stuff up. I have, I have to show you, this is the proof. Okay. But I want to share this chapter with you. It says, um, she forgiven me. She's forgiven me. Forgiven, forgive, it is the only hope, honey. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover the prisoner was you. This is Andy um, Drews, Andrews. And this was a book that I just read. I read this book and um, when right afterwards I found this, <laughs> okay. It's, and he's talking to this young lady that has this unforgiveness in her heart. And she's, it says, forgive, he said, forgive. It is the only hope, honey, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. That was so me. So anyway, let me just read this quick chapter. And it says, while in the midst of writing my story, I was looking through a box of my keepsakes of Celeste. I did not remember receiving this card from her. The second card I picked up closed the circle for, for me on whether or not Celeste had forgiven me. I'm sure from her perspective, I had failed at being a mother. She believed I should have been. 
I know today that I did the best I could and knew to do at that time. Sorry. I could not remember receiving it. Bill told me he vaguely remembered this box, but does remember it hurting me. I had written at the top of the corner May 2000, a little less than six years prior to her death. Why didn't I discuss this card with her? Because it wasn't God's time. I received the full meaning of her words the day I found it. I found this card after September 5th, 2021, Celeste's 40th birthday, and before October 20th, 2021, Celeste's 15th anniversary in heaven. It was another one of those God things. Mom, for some reason, you have been really, I'm sorry, Mom, for some reason, you have really been on my heart lately, so I just wanted to write you a letter telling you how much I love you. This year, since I have been away, God has shown me many things. In the Bible, it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. One major thing God has done is shown me that I needed to forgive you. I want you to know I have forgiven you. I love you. Now more than ever, I have ever loved you before, and that has only come through forgiveness. I believe with all my heart one day you will, rec you will be reconciled with your Savior Jesus. That day you will find complete forgiveness for yourself and true love. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Mom, Jesus died to forgive you. He died because he loves you and longs for you to be with him. He loves you so much that he is standing at the door and knocking, waiting for you to answer the door. I love you, Mom, and I am praying for you. I cannot adequately describe the emotion I had. And she said, and she signs it, Celeste. I cannot adequately describe the emotion I had when reading Celeste's card the second time, but it was really the first time I had read it. The only word um, that captures the overflowing emotion I had was joy. There will be those who might doubt, question my story's events, or even consider the events just as coincidences. Celeste's card was no coincidence. It was a divine intervention. I had carried the heartache of unforgiveness even prior to her death. When reading the card, I was able to forgive myself for the mother I wasn't to her because she had forgiven me. That was my forgiving um, healing process. And then um, I said to you that I would, um, and I'm, I'm going to release this today because it's her birthday, but know that um, in... Um, I think it's um, the second video of, um, no, it's the first video. I talk about the number 1111 and then I, if I had time, I would read it. So I believe that the Holy, I have never done this before. This is the first time that I've done this and this will be 18 years um, in October that she's been, um, that she was taken from me. So um, this chapter is Supernatural Treasures. I love the way he always would just has a special way of teaching me. Um, it was after I found Celeste's card and read that she had forgiven me that I started seeing the numbers 1111. They appeared on addresses, recipes, phone numbers, dates, and times. Bill and Janet, which is my husband and my sister-in-law, often have often said how this number sequence was significant for them because it was the time of their father's death. For me, the numbers had no significance during those times of observing them in their presence. 
what did resonate was a, a spiritual pull toward finding meaning in this number sequence. Someone was, someone was drawing me to discover that someone was the Holy Spirit. With each occurrence, Celeste felt very close to me, as if she was in my space. Thanksgiving week was very different when 11-11 appeared on the living room um, cable box. I walked toward it and felt Celeste's spirit close to me, as if she was hugging me. This encounter still set a burning desire in me to find out what the Holy Spirit was trying to communicate. I needed to find out if I was remaining within the boundaries of his word. With everything that had been going on in and through me, I did not want to step out of bounds, nor did I want to misrepresent my heavenly father. So I just so you know, this is the actual event that occurred, but I didn't get revelation until this past spring, okay? that um, the whole, that um, Abba Father speaks to me through um, guardian angels of specifically of very strong faith-filled women in my life that have been in my life. My grandmother and um, Celeste, my mom and my um, sister-in-law, ex-sister-in-law, I should say. I have, um, they have, uh, their uh, guardian angels have actually showed up in my dreams and directed me um, in um, some very strong revelations in my um, the Holy Spirit used to send messages to me <clears throat> so anyway that was so so that you know that um, this was the process that I went through so I did a few Google searches for the term biblical meaning. I found many results, including higher ideas, spiritual guide, refinement, balance, fulfillment, vision, and guardian angel. I decided to go to the source of my truth, his word, which I should have done in the first place. I went through each book in the Bible, starting with the Psalms and then proceeding through the New Testament and finally the Old Testament. I wrote in my journal those books that had 11 chapters and 11 verses. The scriptures that spoke to my heart was um, Psalms 111.1. Praise the Lord, I will exalt the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in assembly. Knowing that my search was beginning with, with praise in the counsel of the Heavenly Father gave me the reassurance I needed to continue. So I read several more verses. Something inside me seemed to say, this is the way, walk in it, continue reading. So I read verses two through four. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious in majesty are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered, and the Lord is gracious and compassionate. I felt God was giving me the green light to continue my search for truth and understanding. I would soon find out that the Spirit was putting me into a place of expedited divine psychotherapy. This place was needed in order to heal the wounds of my soul. It was yet another season in my spiritual journey. Turning to the New Testament, I opened to Matthew 11:11 11, 11 and read Jesus' words in the red letters. Truly, I tell you, among those born of woman, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus, thank you for valuing me. The next search result I found was Luke 11:11, 11, 11, with Jesus speaking once again in the red, red letters. Which of the fathers, which of you fathers, if your daughter asks for a fish, will you give her a snake instead? I continue reading in verse 13. If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus revealed to me that my heavenly Father is not cruel, judgmental, 
or condemning as portrayed in my youth. He is a good, good father bestowing in me his Holy Spirit and loving me in the pursuit and the purest love ever known to me. I continued my search in the New Testament, Romans 11, 11. Paul is speaking about being grafted into God. Again, I asked, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgressions, salvation has come through God's protection over my life. I never fell beyond what he could not restore. Forgiveness of my transgressions was covered by the cleansing salvation of Jesus, my Savior. When I got to the faith chapter uh, in Hebrews, at the time of my initial search, 11.1 was the word that spoke to my heart. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. At that at the time, I could not explain most of my divine encounters I had had, but with my spirit, new spiritual vision, I now have a certain hope in Jesus that increases my faith in those things I cannot see. Several weeks later was the verse 1111, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. I have to say here, the thoughts of being too old and unqualified crept into my mind, but the Holy Spirit reminded me that there were th that these were the same lies I told myself prior to beginning my nursing education process at the age of 47. So many spiritual, supernatural, mysterious events have brought about my salvation and continue healing. Seers cannot appreciate how, seers cannot appreciate with natural sight, nor can they humanly understand the transformation. Only by faith and God's revelation can these things be humanly explained because I have witnessed the power in Jesus' name. My faith has increased to expect the unexpected. Each event was pointed in the direction of additional steps of discovering the pure love and truth of Jesus. I know I am not the same woman I was prior to Celeste's death. I am also a personal witness of the transforming grace within his spiritual, mysteries. I am certain of those things I cannot see and their relevance to the spiritual cravings of my soul. My hope has changed into expectations of his glory being revealed through his light radiating through and out of my life. As I was meditating on each of these scriptures, the Holy Spirit seemed to open my spiritual eyesight to see with better clarity who I am in Christ Jesus. I am loved valued, worthy, and wanted by my heavenly Father. Along, the spiritual, along with spiritual clarity, he reassured me, listen to this, he has a divine plan for my life in Deuteronomy 11, 11. And this is where this, um, that um, spoken word ties in. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. Yes, I will have more high mountains to climb and wide valleys to walk through in my continued journey. But now I have Jesus who will not only be with me in each step, but he will also direct my path. Every place I will go, he has already gone before me. I just have to make sure I follow and not rush ahead prior to his divine time. My heavenly father will provide all I need to make my journey even to the extent of pouring his heavenly rain on my path. Jesus, soak me with your heavenly rain. Pour your pour, rain, pour your spirit out on me and consume every synapse in my physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. I had received such healing revelation through clear, through and clarity with 1111. I went to bed that night thinking of any other number sequence I had seen since Celeste's death. 
I want you to know there are additional number sequence that have been given to me, that were given to me, that were relevant in my healing. And, um, you know what? I am at 30 minutes, but I believe that, yes, <laughs> this is a treasure hunt. Um, I had additional numbers that you can read about in my book, but I believe that the Holy Spirit needs, is leading me to, to um, read this treasure hunt that he brought me on. You see, when we gone through trauma, there can possibly be some possession, okay, demonic possession, that we can receive deliverance from but we actually have to go through a process, a healing process of the trauma, okay? Um, because, just because we are delivered from demonic activity that has possessed us prior to our, our salvation, like generational bloodline curses, um, in my case, um, we have to go through a, a healing um, and of, of the trauma, okay? So I'm going to, there is a word that, that the Holy Spirit, this is another part of my healing journey, that he would give me one, one single words. And um, I'm going to read this, this chapter because I believe it's going to help someone in their healing process, okay? So... Um, this title of this chapter is Treasure Hunt. Recently, the Holy Spirit began a treasure hunt in discovering new truths within his lesson plans for me. Daily, he would give me one word over a week to 10 days. The Spirit had gotten very creative with his teaching plan. Initially, I didn't understand how to play the game. I was presented he was presenting to me. While searching for what the Spirit was trying to teach me, I discovered many spiritual treasures hidden within the one word he was giving me. The first word he placed in my mind was refractory. The word refractory moved in and out of my mind for several days. Finally, I asked Bill, what does the word refractory mean? He said, I don't know. This started my search of the spiritual treasures. Seek and you will find the truth. But first, I needed to know the definition of refactory. Wait for it. The Holy Spirit is loving, gentle, and kind in his teaching and um, discipline of my spirit. Here it is. The Strong's Concordance describes refractory as not being submissive, disobedient, unwilling to come under Christ's lordship, refusing to fail, fall in line with God's plan, rebellious, uncooperative, with a defiant attitude toward duly appointed authority, uncontrollable. Must I go on? This was definitely speaking to me. My prayer while I was going, while I was doing my deep dive on refractory was, Lord, no matter how messy my healing journey is, I move forward to receive your healing process. I want to be whole in my spirit, soul, and mind. I found many scriptures dealing with refractory amongst God's children. And, and it was in Isaiah 58, 1 through 12, in the Passion Translation, that the Holy Spirit's truth for this lesson plan was revealed. God revealed to me to worship him in spirit and in truth from a place of, and not from a place of ritual or ceremony. And I'm not going to read that, but you can go read that for yourself. It's Isaiah 58, 1 through 12. And it talks about um, to worship in spirit, worship him in spirit and truth. As I was absorbing the truth, I discovered a sense in my spirit that there was more to the word refractory that the Spirit wanted me to discover. Since my baptism, he had been working with me in un 
overcoming the enemy's lies. What the Holy Spirit revealed to me next will forever be a pivotal moment in my spiritual maturing journey. My search revealed, listen to this, psychological refractory period. It is defined as a period of time during which the response to a second stimulus is significantly slower because the first stimulus is still being processed. It wouldn't be until several lessons, uh, several lessons and days later before his message was spoken into my spirit. God said to me, the trauma of your past are the traumas of your past are hindering you from being propelled forward in my purpose, plan, and will for your life. There it is again, trauma. My past had been slowing me down from walking into the fullness God, of God's plan. So, um, um, and then the next word was um, discernment. And he went through, the Holy Spirit went through and literally, literally gave me words, gaslighting. I had never heard the word gaslighting. But after he gave me this word, gas, well, before gaslighting was discernment. So I needed to learn discernment. That was a word that I had to search out. And then gaslighting. Gaslighting, I didn't know what gaslighting, and sure enough, within a week or so, I had been gaslit, and then I knew um, I knew what it meant, and, and then I didn't, uh, the, it, it wasn't like a, a trigger, because that was one of those triggers that would just um, set me off into anger. And then um, predestined, he brought predestined up to me. So these are some of the words, and, uh, and and the process in which um, the Holy Spirit took me through in this live healing event in my journey. Um, and um, I want to say that after I wrote my book, I was like, okay, the next step, okay, in the process is marketing. Um, but Abba told me, no, he would, he's like, nope, then, um, I will do the marketing. So I, I, I didn't do any marketing. I just would hand my books out to people. And, and so, but I believe that this is the time, this is the time that he had planned to market my book because it's a healing process that um, he told me while I was writing it. He took me through this process so that others, that I could lead others through um, the pro their process of healing from trauma. So um, I just, you can get my book on Amazon. Um, and, um, I, you know, I would ask if you would, it, um, if you get it, if you could possibly um, leave a review on it um, to help just to get it out. Um, I believe that God um, is going to start using this book for healing and um, bringing those women and, and men and men that have experienced trauma in their childhood, um, church hurt, because it's all in my book, and from church hurt to, to um, being abused, divorce, loss of a daughter, um, miracles, signs and wonders, um, all in my book. It's all in my book. And um, this is, again, just like I say, that this channel is God's channel. This book was the Holy Spirit's book. I, um, I told you often that I, um, one of the excuses I used uh, for never starting the, writing my book is like, I felt second grade because I couldn't read. I didn't know, I, to this day, I do not know the parts of speech. Literally, the Holy Spirit would tell me where to put a comma, where to put an explanation point. That was how detailed he was in, in writing this book through me. That's why I say this book was not written by me. It was written by the Holy Spirit. And um, 
because this is none of me, believe you me, but it was divinely ordained. And I was, I was divinely ordained for this time. And now I am part of an Issachar tribe. You will get that um, spoken word that I received last night as part of a gift um, from my Abba father on my daughter's 43rd birthday. So I just wanted to share a little bit about my, um, about my testimony. And, um, and I pray that um, if you need someone to walk with, uh, um, please reach out to me. We have such beautiful, beautiful women within our tribe that have divine gifting, divine gifting of deliverance and and um, maturing in the gifts of of the Holy Spirit and and um, in relationship with Jesus. I am most definitely sure that of the ones that we, and they're all over the world, from Germany to London to South Africa, to California, to Ohio, to Connecticut now, and um, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee. So um, Arizona, there was one from Arizona. And um, anyway, I, if you'd like to reach out to me, um, and you can reach out to me in Skipping with Jesus at gmail.com. Skipping with Jesus at gmail.com. And I will put that in the more section of this video. I love you. Until next time, may the Father find us skipping down those uncharted paths with his son. Happy birthday, my precious daughter. I know you're celebrating with Jesus. And um, one day I'll see you very soon, I believe, very soon. But until then, I will continue the Lord's work and what he's called me to do. I love you. Bye-bye.